After learning that it takes 20 exposures to learn a new word in a foreign language, and then modeling what that would look like for reading and for watching TV, I put my money where my mouth is and tried it out. I did a seven day challenge trying to learn Polish using only Polish language YouTube videos and then tested myself at the end. Here's what happened. I chose Polish because given my family history, I may want to learn it at some point, and it also has most of the same letters as the English language, meaning that it would be a little bit more understandable. I picked the Easy Polish YouTube channel as the source for all of my content because everything they make is in Polish, but they also have Polish and English subtitles under every video. So on the first day, I opened YouTube and began watching. Snyadania, we said is breakfast. So bre Kau kurcze. Okay, so kurcze. Always has something to do with a tomato. There's so many consonants and so many little flecks on each of the letters. It's like I'm disrespecting so many Polish people. Oy. As I watched, I learned a number of things. First, it was silly things like the fact that Polish sounds like Russian spoken in Italian. And then I learned that even with all of the enthusiasm and misplaced confidence of a not yet YouTuber, conversation in a foreign language is way too fast paced to just sit back and get anything meaningful from even if you have subtitles. For the challenge, I chose seven videos from their channel. The first four days were simpler videos about a day in the life or explaining individual words in Polish. And the last three days, I watched their on the street interviews with random Polish people about birthdays, relaxation, and famous scientists. I knew that I would need a way to track the number of exposures I had to each word, and also what my vocabulary and ability to understand Polish at the end of the challenge would be. With that in mind, I came up with three ways of evaluating my skills at the end of the challenge. First, and most importantly, do I know all of the words that I saw at least 20 times? Second, are there any words that I picked up on that I saw less than 20 times? And third, if after the challenge I watch a video in Polish, how much can I get out of it? Carrying out this challenge was tricky because in order to come up with my final exam, I needed to know which words were mentioned more than 20 times across all the videos that I'd watched. From work I had done for previous videos, I had code to process the transcripts for these videos in Polish without exposing me to the language itself. Thanks to this code, that means that before I started the challenge, I was able to come up with the test materials themselves with very, very limited exposure to Polish and certainly no translation between English and Polish. Even in the first video, a few things began to click. The first were English loanwords to Polish that immediately made sense. Then I also noticed some words that I could figure out because I knew German. And then I began to recognize some of the repeat words in Polish. Just like English, Polish also has some one-letter words, usually for prepositions. Those obvious, simple words were the first ones that were recognizable, even if they didn't stick. That being said, I also began to recognize longer words as well. As the challenge continued, I also noticed a few things that challenged the assumptions that I had used in previous videos. For example, let's say I watch a video about Polish scientists. The word scientist shows up 10 times, and the word scientist Tists shows up 12 times. In English, those words sound similar enough that my gut says that you should just say it's as if you've seen the word scientist 22 times and boom, now you know the word. This is an example of lemmatization or grouping variations of the same word. But as someone who doesn't know Polish, it's not obvious that the words for scientist and scientists are actually related. And for a separate example, what do we do about verbs? If you have at least past, present, future, and imperative, and each of these has six conjugations, if we're trying to count up to the 20 exposures you need, if you see each one of these conjugations, then you've reached that 20 limit. And even though I watched an entire video on the Polish word to have, it does doesn't mean that I know the word. In ideal language learning, I would understand the connection between all forms of a word and the meaning of the word. In actual language learning, especially as a beginner, assuming I even catch the word, I care about more than just meaning. Spelling, pronunciation, intonation, and grouping of words also matters. There are times where you will watch or read intensively, paying attention to the meaning and all of these other things for every single word. But there are other times where you just want to cover ground and enjoy casual time with your target language, letting yourself subconscious do the observing and processing of most of this information. As I continue through the days of watching Polish videos, I experience that if we're trying to boil down language learning to numbers, how we engage with our target language really matters. Looking at the transcripts for the seven videos I watched for my challenge, if we lemmatize and only use the root words, my vocabulary should be 64 words. But if we don't lemmatize and just leave each word as it is, my vocabulary should only be 39 words. 
As I kept watching videos, I had to suppress a very specific urge. One way to increase the number of exposures that you have to a word in a language is to use note cards or flashcards in a system like Anki. But because I wanted this challenge to focus very much on the content and the input, I suppressed the urge to make Anki cards for all of the Polish words I was seeing. So I kept watching, and after a week, I'd watched all seven videos, and it was test day. Since I'm such a beginner, the format for the test was very straightforward. I had a list of Polish words, and I just had to write the English translation of those words. The test included all of the words that I had seen more than 20 times, and then also a control group of just some random words that I had been exposed to along the way, but hadn't seen 20 times. Of the 39 words that I was exposed to 20 or more times, I only knew seven of them. That's a dismal 18%. Ah! Why? What I find interesting, though, is that of the other random words that I included in the test, I knew 6 of the 54, which is 11% of them. That means that I picked up other, less common words along the way. Okay, so the written portion of the test did not go well. After the written test, I opened up a video from the Easy Polish YouTube channel and blocked the English subtitles. And yes, this is less objective, but I can confidently say that I understood next to nothing. Ah, why? I recognized a solid number of words and could pick out the English or German loan words, but the pacing was too fast and I had such a small foundation in Polish that the whole experience was disheartening to say the least. The main redeeming factor here is those common words that I should have known when I took the test generally aren't critical to the message of the sentence itself and are more structural. So as I was watching, those aren't what I was paying attention to within most sentences. And the way that I set up the test only included exposure to individual words completely out of context, which is very different from the watching experience. Okay, so this has been enlightening. Reflecting on the experience, there are plenty of other points that I'm going to continue to explore in other videos. First, a seven day challenge is a ridiculously short amount of time to try and test this out in, even if that 20 exposure rule applies at all levels. I could have also watched more videos per day, since the seven videos I watched only totaled about one hour of content in Polish, and though I spent closer to two hours if you include the pausing and the lookups, though I didn't repeat anything. I may do this again as a 30-day challenge, though like I mentioned before, I would want to include Anki into that to really accelerate the learning. With all that in mind, clearly I would benefit from some more traditional language learning methods like explanations, grammar, and some vocab so that I could build more of a foundation in Polish. I also want to explore more when it comes to reading versus watching versus listening. My gut says that reading is probably the most effective if we're looking at one exposure to a word, but if we look at the number of words acquired versus the time spent on an activity, you encounter so many more words per hour when it comes to watching and listening. Another lesson for me was that if you've ever played air hockey, then you're familiar with the concept of an elastic collision, where two perfectly hard things collide, but no energy is lost. With many words in Polish, that's how I felt. I encountered them, but then they bounced off me without leaving any impression, so it's hard to say that they should be counted towards the 20 exposures. Helpful friction is one key ingredient when it comes to language learning, though you also do want to balance efficiency. You want to encounter a word, engage with it enough so that it sticks, and then move on. But you don't want to spend a half hour learning every word. And the last lesson that this challenge reminded me of was how humbling language learning can be, whether you're just starting out or trying to speak for the first few times. To get through these different stages of language learning, you have to take somewhat of a light approach where you're okay laughing at yourself and looking like a fool, including when you get an 18% on your self-imposed final exam. I know this isn't the case for everyone, but for me, since language learning is a hobby, I can learn at my own pace, so feeling like a fool is just part of the game. The results of this challenge do temper my optimism about an input-only approach. But thinking back to when I learned German, I used exposure to the language through native content using dual subtitles, and it really made a difference. A solid foundation for my vocabulary comes from videos like the ones that I watched for this challenge. But for a few weeks before I started with this input-heavy approach, I spent time with a German textbook trying to understand some of the foundations of the language. For this video, I was curious to see what would happen if I skipped that first step and just relied on input alone without explanations. Like we've seen in past videos and echoed here, words do begin to trickle in, whether it takes 20 exposures or 50 or 100. So as long as you're committed to your goal for the long haul and you don't quit, you will be able to amass thousands of words in your vocabulary and enjoy content. And while this challenge was both fun and deflating, I could definitely see myself learning a language like this again. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be.